Congratulations are in order to Drew Cathy, who was saved by Kentucky's victory over Ohio State. Drew will be splitting the $200 with Peter Schneider that goes to the second round leader. However, both of these gentlemen have now faded out of contention to win the pool. Neither of them will be winning the pool. Congratulations also to Gene Powell. Yes, Gene has officially wrapped up the P.J. Potter Award. Gene picked 22 out of 32 correct in the first round of the tournament, 6 out of 16 correct in the second round, a putrid performance, and only 1 out of 8, 1 of the Elite 8. Absolutely pathetic, horrifically bad. Gene had Ohio State and Syracuse. Gene had Duke and San Diego State. Blech. Gene had Pitt and Florida. The one she got right had to go to overtime to win in a game earlier. And Gene also had Louisville and Notre Dame. Of course, Louisville was eliminated in the first round. So Gene is officially finished with 38 points for the pool. She has zero of the final four and has completed her scoring with 38 points. Officially in last place, winner of the P.J. Potter Award. Congratulations, Gene Powell. Thank you for chipping in $80 for next year's pool entry. We love it. Other people, by the way, guaranteed to have zero of the final four pathetic performances include Jess Martinetti, Andrew Van Wy, Chris Heigl, Ramon Rouse, Earl Kelly, Chris Valentino, and yes, unfortunately, me. I am ashamed. I have zero of the final four. My picks this year sucked. However, some people did not suck. Congratulations to Rachel Schaefer for picking five of the Elite Eight and taking over first place in the pool with 62 points. Rachel, by the way, has Kentucky to win it all. So if that happens, Rachel will definitely be the champion. Ty Wilder is in second place in the pool with 61 points. And Ty, by the way, has uh, North Carolina over Florida in the championship game. So if North Carolina wins it all, Ty will be our champion. In third place with 60 points is Lauren Horton. Lauren has Duke to win it all, so he will not likely be winning the pool, but has a chance to money if a lot of upsets happen. In fourth place with 59 points is Chris Niku. Chris has Kansas to win the pool, but has no other... Uh, teams in the final four so it, it'd be very hard pressed for Chris to hold on to that uh, position and win the pool if Kansas wins. Uh, Mike Sauce is in fifth place with 58 points and Mike has three out of his final four alive. One of the few people in the pool with three out of four. Mike has Kansas, North Carolina, and Florida but he picked Duke to win the championship so Mike Sauce is now the biggest Arizona fan in our pool besides Justin Cofield. So that's what you need, Mike, is you need your three to make it, and you need Arizona to advance all the way through and win. With 57 points, uh, rounding out our Elite Eight right now are Aaron York, Tyler Doubt, and Joe Shoup. Uh, Chris Oaks, by the way, has three of his final four still around, North Carolina, can Kansas, and Florida. But, of course, he picks San Diego State to win it all. Thank God, by the way, that uh, the... Uh, Aztecs lost. I'm wearing my black and red, by the way, of Santa Clara University right now in honor of uh, San Diego State's black and red. They're out, though. Evan Price also has three of his final four still alive with Kansas, North Carolina, and UConn. And Evan has Kansas over North Carolina in the championship game. That pick could be looking very good right now. Evan may have a strong chance of winning the pool. Joe Gianosa. The man clowned earlier in our pool, who Nick Pang laughed at uh, hilariously. Uh, Joe has 51 points, so he's not in the Elite Eight or anywhere near it right now. But he does have UNC, Kansas, and UConn still alive. And he has UConn over Kansas in the championship game. So if UConn can continue that run of five straight victories they had in the Big East tournament with six more here for 11 in a row... Uh, they would take down the tournament, and Joe Gianosa would be the likely winner of the pool. So those are some of the leading contenders. I am still on page one, by the way. However, I have completed my scoring. 
and I will not be finishing in any strong position this year. Toward the bottom of the pool, the people with horrifically bad picks this year, people like Justin Cofield with only 44 points, the man who didn't even take Arizona to advance, horrid. 43 points, Chris Dennis, J. Brad Britton, who has escaped the cellar, and Andrew Van Wy, 43 points. With 42 points, Jess Martinetti, entering the pool for the first year. Thank you for your donation. With 41 points, Dave Wilda, clearly recruited by Ty Wilda. Ty is one of the leaders. Dave is one of the cabooses of the pool. With 40 points, Lauren Gibbs, the previous cellar dweller, and Jeff not Stradamus Nixon. Jeff, your picks have sucked every year since you won the pool way back in the 90s. 39 points, Christina Sung in her first attempt to prognosticate any American sport. Pretty weak. But the cellar dweller is Gene Powell with 38. Gene, you have won the PJ Potter Award. Congratulations. People, there are too many scenarios right now for me to even attempt to articulate who will win if what things happen in the next couple days. Obviously, if you're one of the leading contenders, you want to see your teams win, and you want to see the teams you don't have lose quickly. Uh, you want to see teams like Arizona advance, or you want to see teams like Butler advance, or you want to see teams like Virginia Commonwealth advance. Uh, you basically need to have uh, the teams that other people picked be eliminated as quickly as possible and have your teams continue to win. So that's what's happening right now. Be back at you guys on Sunday when we're down to the final four with some of the final scenarios for who can be part of the illustrious Elite Eight of the Vector Marketing Corporation March Madness Maniacs NCAA pool. I'm looking forward to an awesome weekend. Should be some great games. Talk to you soon, everyone. See ya.